Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Tables can have many purposes in Word. You can use tables to manipulate data like a spreadsheet program. Or you can use them to help you structure the layout of content within a document. While many people often think of cells in a table as only recording text and numbers, you can place any content you want into cells, like pictures for example. You can edit individual cells or create and delete entire columns and rows of cells. However, before we look at manipulating tables, we need to look at how to create a table in Word. This lesson shows you how to create a basic structured table layout. These types of tables, which resemble grids, have a consistent structure and you often use them for data storage. After creating structured tables, this lesson then shows you how to create tables that have an irregular cell structure. You often use these types of tables to help you lay out a document. For example, if you wanted to create a coupon cutout in a document for people to use, you could place the coupon information into the cells within a table to enhance the appearance of the final printed product. To create a basic structured table, click the Insert tab in the ribbon. Then click the Table button in the Tables button group to display a drop-down menu. To create a structured table, roll your mouse pointer out and over the grid shown in the drop-down menu by the number of columns and rows you want to insert into the table. The dimensions of the table appear above the grid as the number of columns by the number of rows when you roll your mouse pointer over the grid. Click your mouse after highlighting the desired number of columns and rows to insert a table of the displayed dimensions into your document. After creating the table, you can then perform data entry. Moving into cells to enter information is easy. Either click into the cells within which to enter information, or press the tab key on your keyboard to move from cell to cell, from left to right, and top to bottom. Note that if you press the tab key, when the insertion mark cursor is in the last cell in a table, which is the lower right corner cell, Word then inserts a new row for you at the bottom of the table so that you may continue your data entry. Cells can also contain multiple lines of text if needed. Entering text into a cell works the same way as when entering text into a document. When the text reaches the cell's border, it automatically wraps down to the next line in the cell. You only need to press the Enter key on your keyboard if you want to create a new paragraph in a cell. Another way to create a structured table is to click the Table button that appears in the Tables button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon. Then choose the Insert Table command from the button's drop-down menu. Doing this opens the Insert Table dialog box. In this dialog box, enter the number of columns for the table into the Number of Columns field in the Table Size section. Then enter the number of rows for the table into the Number of Rows field. To set how Word determines the width of the table's columns, select an Option button in the Auto Fit Behavior section. To make the columns a set size, select the Fixed Column Width option. Then use the adjacent spinner box to set the desired column's width. Alternatively, to let Word adjust the column's widths based on the content entered into them, select the Auto Fit to Contents option. Alternatively, to let Word adjust the column's widths to fit the window width, select the Auto Fit to Window option. Then click the OK button to insert a table of the specified dimensions into your document. Next you will learn how to create a table by drawing its individual cells by hand. While it is possible to use this method to create an organized structured table, you use this method more often to create a layout for your document's content. You can also use it to make minor adjustments to a structured table. To draw a table in Word, click the Insert tab in the ribbon. Then click the Table button in the Tables button group. Then select the Draw Table command from the button's drop-down menu. Your mouse pointer then turns into a pencil icon when you hold it back over the document area. 
At that point, click and drag to draw the table cells you want. If needed, you can also click and drag within a cell from one side to another to split a cell into additional columns and rows of cells. Note that this tool remains enabled after you finish drawing the table cells. To turn this feature off, click the Table button that appears in the Tables button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon, and then select the Draw Table command again. Alternatively, press the Escape key on your keyboard to turn it off. Notice that when you initially select the Draw Table command and then start drawing table cells, then either the Table Design and Layout Contextual tabs or the Design and Layout tabs of the Table Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon depending on your Office version. The Table Design Contextual tab lets you use the buttons in the Borders button group to change the line style, line thickness, and line color of the lines you draw using the Draw Table button. You can use the Line Style dropdown to select a different line style to apply. Likewise, you can use the Line Weight drop-down to select a line thickness. You can use the Pen Color drop-down button to select the line color. Then you can use the Draw Table button to draw lines that match the settings you selected. You can also click and drag over the lines you have already drawn in a table to redraw the lines using the new formatting. When first learning to draw table cells, you will inevitably make a few errant lines. You can erase mistakes by using the Eraser button. To erase table lines, click the Tables Layout Contextual tab in the ribbon. Then click the Eraser button that appears in the Draw button group. Your mouse pointer then turns into an eraser when you hold it back over the document. Place it over the line to remove and then click and drag the mouse over the line to erase. It can be a bit tricky at first. The line to delete should appear highlighted before you release the mouse button. This button, like the Draw Table button, also remains enabled until you turn it off. To do this, click the same Eraser button once again or press the Escape key on your keyboard. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.